All right, folks, let's dive in because today we're tackling one of the most misunderstood yet crucial topics in muscle growth, how to pick the best exercises for hypertrophy. And before you ask no, it's not just squat, bench, deadlift, repeat until your joints file for divorce. Choosing exercises for muscle growth is both an art and a science. It's like cooking a steak. You can't just throw random stuff in a pan and hope it turns out great. You've got to know why each ingredient is there. Now, I get it. The fitness world is a jungle. One influencer says, barbell only, bro. Another says, machines are life. And then someone else pops in doing Bulgarian split squats, barefoot in a forest, talking about functional hypertrophy. Meanwhile, you're standing there wondering, do I really need to feel like a yoga flamingo to grow quads? The truth, there's no single magic exercise that works for everyone, but there are principles that help. You pick what's best for your body, your goals, and your recovery ability. See, the body doesn't care about how fancy or hardcore your exercise looks. It cares about tension, range of motion, and consistency. The muscles don't know if you're holding a barbell, dumbbell, or your toddler, they just know mechanical tension. So instead of chasing Instagram approved moves, you want to build your routine around exercises that load your target muscles safely, progressively, and through a full range of motion. That's how you grow. Not by mimicking someone else's training, but by understanding how to make each rep count. And before we jump in, remember the best exercise isn't the one that sounds cool or makes you cry tears of lactic acid on rep eight. It's the one you can do well and consistently over time. So grab your shaker cup, because we're about to break down the six key principles for picking exercises that'll turn meh training into real hypertrophy. Magic. All right, folks, let's talk about one of the most confusing yet exciting parts of training picking exercises for muscle growth. You'd think it'd be simple, right? Walk into a gym, pick up a barbell, do some curls, and boom, you're jacked by Friday. But no, somehow, every gym bro, fitness influencer, and guy who once watched an Arnold documentary has a different opinion on what's best. One says only barbells matter. Another says machines are king. Someone else is out there balancing on a BOSU ball, curling pink dumbbells, talking about stability muscles, and you're left wondering if you're even training right. The truth is, picking the best exercises isn't about being trendy or hardcore. It's about understanding what actually makes muscles grow and how to apply that knowledge intelligently. See. Your body doesn't care about how cool an exercise looks. It doesn't even know what a barbell is. All your muscles care about is how much tension they're under, for how long, and through what range of motion. That's it. You can be holding a dumbbell, using a cable, or even lifting a heavy backpack. The key is whether that muscle is being challenged effectively. So instead of obsessing over whether you're doing the best movement someone on YouTube said was magical, start thinking about what's best for you. Your anatomy, your recovery, your skill level, all of that matters more than the exercise's popularity. And here's where the fun begins. Exercise selection is actually a personal process, not a one-size-fits-all checklist. The perfect movement for your training partner might wreck your joints or feel completely awkward to you. Someone with short arms might love bench pressing. Someone with long arms might find it feels more like a shoulder press. One person's perfect squat stance might feel like a chiropractic emergency for someone else. That's why learning to listen to your body, not your ego, is the real superpower here. Now, before you think I'm saying variety is bad or that there's no best exercise, hold up. There absolutely are movements that consistently produce better results because they let you load muscles safely, stably, and deeply. The magic happens when you combine good biomechanics with smart choices and consistency. That's when progress stops being random and starts being predictable. Picking the best exercises is about mastering that balance between what's effective on paper and what's sustainable in your real training life. Not everyone is built the same, and that means not every exercise will feel the same or produce the same results for everyone. Anatomy plays a massive role in how we experience movement, and it's something people often overlook when designing their training. Some people have longer femurs, others have shorter torsos, some have deep hip sockets, 
other shallow ones, all these details influence how comfortable and effective an exercise feels. That's why forcing yourself into textbook form for every lift can sometimes do more harm than good. The guy on YouTube may swear by barbell back squats, but if your hip structure makes that movement feel like joint torture, it doesn't make sense to keep hammering away at it. You're not a machine, you're a biological system with unique leverages, and your exercise choices should reflect that. The best approach is to think in terms of function, not imitation. The goal of training isn't to perform specific exercises, it's to train specific muscles effectively. If your goal is to grow your chest, for instance, you don't have to bench press. You can do dumbbell presses, machine presses, or even push-ups if those give you a better connection and less shoulder stress. If your training back and traditional barbell rows destroy your lower back, switch to chest-supported rows or cables. The body doesn't care which tool you use. It cares about whether the targeted muscle is being sufficiently loaded. Pay attention to how an exercise feels in the muscle you're targeting. If you're doing squats and all you feel is your lower back or knees, that's a sign the movement isn't fitting your structure. It's not about toughness or grinding through discomfort. It's about efficiency and longevity. You want to pick exercises that let you apply maximum effort to the muscles, not to surviving the movement. This mindset not only helps prevent injuries, but also ensures you can stay consistent, and consistency is what drives progress over time. It also helps to record your lifts or get feedback from a coach who understands biomechanics. Sometimes small adjustments in stance, grip, or range of motion can make an exercise go from awkward to amazing. When you find the movements that fit your body, everything changes, better tension, smoother execution, stronger contractions, and ultimately, better muscle growth. Stability is one of the most underrated factors in building muscle, yet it makes a huge difference in how much you can stimulate the target muscle. When your body is wobbling and shaking just to stay balanced, a big chunk of your energy is being wasted on coordination instead of creating tension where it matters. That's why stable exercises like machine presses, cable rows, or chest-supported movements often produce a better hypertrophy response than exercises that demand tons of balance. Think of it this way. The more you can focus purely on contracting and controlling the muscle, the more effective each rep becomes. Stability doesn't make you weaker. It lets you direct more effort into the muscle rather than fighting gravity or your own shaky knees. For example, Compare a barbell row to a chest-supported row. The barbell version looks cooler, sure, but it also taxes your lower back, core, and grip all before your lats even start to fatigue. Meanwhile, a chest-supported row locks your torso in place, removes the stability challenge, and lets you isolate your back far more effectively. The same goes for pressing movements. A dumbbell bench press is fantastic for stability training and balance, but if your goal is to maximally load your chest, a machine press or Smith machine bench press might be superior because you can push harder without worrying about the dumbbells wobbling or crashing down when fatigue sets in. This doesn't mean free weights are bad. They're amazing tools for building overall strength, coordination, and control. But when it comes to hypertrophy, stability allows you to safely apply progressive overload over time without being limited by your ability to balance. It's why advanced bodybuilders often favor machines and cables in later stages of their training, not because they're lazy, but because they understand that isolating a muscle under controlled conditions is more productive for growth than constantly managing instability. So when choosing exercises, think about how much stability you have during the movement. If your setup feels shaky or like you're fighting to stay upright, you're probably not getting the most out of your sets. Pick variations that let you stay locked in, keep tension where it belongs, and fully control every inch of the motion. That's how you make each rep count and get more muscle building stimulus with less wasted effort. Progression is the backbone of muscle growth, and if you can't measure your progress, you can't improve it. The best exercises are the ones that allow you to clearly see whether you're getting stronger, performing more reps, or executing better form over time. You want to be able to track your improvements in a straightforward way without guesswork or complicated setups. Think about it. If one week you're doing 10 reps with 100 pounds and the next week you're doing 11 or 12 reps with the same weight, that's 
progress. But if you're switching exercises every session or using movements that are hard to measure, like bodyweight only work or unstable positions, you're missing the chance to apply consistent overload, which is the single most important driver of hypertrophy. When you can easily add small increments of weight, extend your range of motion, or perform extra reps, you build a structure for long-term growth. That's why exercises like barbell presses, leg presses, and cable movements are so effective, they allow for precise adjustments in resistance. On the other hand, if you're stuck with a machine that jumps from 20 pounds to 30 pounds with no in-between, that's a huge leap that might make progressive overload less practical. The same goes for dumbbell racks that skip from 25 to 35 pounds. Those gaps can make it hard to find the right challenge level which is why tools like microplates or adjustable dumbbells can be game changers for keeping progress smooth and steady. Another key part of progression is consistency in your form. You might think you're getting stronger, but if your technique is changing every week, you're not truly progressing, you're just altering leverage to make the movement easier. The goal is to improve performance without compromising form, track your lifts, record your sessions, and use a training log to keep yourself accountable. A well-chosen exercise lets you easily see if you're lifting more, moving better, or controlling the load with greater precision. When you pick exercises that let you measure and repeat your effort with clarity, you take the guesswork out of training, progress becomes visible, motivation stays high, and every session builds on the last. That's how smart athletes turn good exercises into long-term muscle building machines. When choosing exercises for muscle growth, one of the smartest things you can do is prioritize movements that load your muscles heavily while keeping your joints safe. Too many lifters confuse pain with progress, thinking that if something hurts, it must be working, but joint pain is not a badge of honor, it's a signal that something's wrong. Your elbows, knees, and lower back should never be the limiting factor in your training. The key is finding exercises that stress the muscle fibers you want to grow without grinding your joints into dust. For example, if barbell skull crushers destroy your elbows but cable pushdowns feel great, go with the cables. The goal is to hammer your triceps, not to test your joint durability. A lot of classic barbell lifts are excellent for building muscle, but not all of them fit everyone's structure equally well. A movement that gives one person incredible gains might leave another person limping out of the gym. If your lower back is constantly fried from barbell rows or your knees ache after heavy squats, it's not a sign to toughen up, it's a sign to adapt. Swap out movements that irritate your joints for ones that allow smoother loading and more controlled execution. Chest-supported rows, leg presses, and hack squats are great alternatives that reduce joint strain while still allowing you to train hard and heavy. The best athletes and bodybuilders aren't the ones who train through pain, they're the ones who train around it intelligently. It's also important to recognize the difference between muscular discomfort and joint discomfort. A burning sensation in the muscle is a good sign of local fatigue. That's where growth happens. A sharp or achy feeling deep in a joint is a warning. Paying attention to those signals will not only keep you healthier, but also keep your training consistent. Injuries are the fastest way to halt progress and consistent, pain-free training over time will always outperform short bursts of reckless intensity. Selecting exercises that allow a deep, controlled range of motion with minimal joint stress is the sweet spot. Movements that feel smooth and natural let you apply more effort where it counts on the muscle and that's what drives hypertrophy. Protecting your joints isn't about being cautious. It's about setting yourself up for sustainable, long-term growth. Enjoyment and recovery might not sound like the most scientific parts of training, but they're absolutely critical if you want long-term muscle growth. The best exercises are the ones you actually enjoy doing because enjoyment leads to consistency and consistency beats everything else. You can have the most optimal plan in the world, but if you dread half the movements and skip sessions because they feel miserable, you're not gonna make progress. When you like what you're doing, you train harder, focus better, and stay motivated for months instead of weeks. The same goes for recovery. If your exercise selection constantly leaves you exhausted, sore for days, or mentally drained, you're probably doing too. Much of the wrong kind of work for your current recovery capacity. Some lifters make the mistake of thinking that the more fatigue they create, 
the more they'll grow. But hypertrophy doesn't come from how destroyed you feel after a session, it comes from how well you recover and adapt before the next one. If you can't maintain good performance across your training week, it's a sign your exercise choices might be too demanding or poorly balanced. For example, heavy compound lifts like squats and deadlifts are phenomenal, but if you're doing both intensely multiple times per week, your lower back and nervous system may not keep up. Substituting some of those sessions with machine variations, cables, or isolation work can keep your stimulus high while reducing overall fatigue. Enjoyment also comes from feeling successful during your workouts. Movements that allow you to feel a strong muscle contraction, stay in control, and see measurable progress tend to keep motivation high. If a movement constantly feels awkward or unproductive, there's no shame in replacing it. Training isn't punishment, it's practice for growth. When you build a program around exercises that you look forward to, you're far more likely to bring the intensity and focus needed to actually make progress. Balancing enjoyment and recovery creates a sustainable cycle. You train hard, recover well, and come back stronger. Your exercise selection should reflect that balance with enough challenge to stimulate growth, but not so much that it leaves you wiped out. When training feels rewarding, instead of draining, progress becomes automatic and muscle growth becomes something you can sustain for life rather than survive for a few months. So here's the deal. The best exercises aren't about ego complexity or looking impressive in the gym mirror. They're about fit, stability, range, progression, safety, and sustainability. Muscle growth is a long game and the winners aren't the ones doing the wildest workouts. They're the ones who master the basics, recover well, and show up week after week. So experiment, listen to your body, refine your exercise selection, and remember, don't just train hard, train smart, because muscles grow best when your plan makes sense, not just when your veins pop. Now get out there, lift with purpose, and make those gains so good that even your mirror starts flexing back 